we are talking to Dr. Karan Singh. Dr. Karan Singh is a well-known scholar, diplomat and also a senior member of the Congress Party. He is also the son of the last Maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir, Hari Singh. As we mark the 125th birth anniversary of Jawaharlal Nehru, what exactly are we celebrating? We are celebrating the, the birth of one of the most remarkable leaders in the last century. Um, a man who not only played a major role in the freedom movement as one of the chief lieutenants of Mahatma Gandhi, but was also after freedom India's first Prime Minister for 17 years. And during that period, I mean, so it was a unique uh, uh, combination of somebody who went to jail and who was in the freedom movement for many years and then also lived on and uh, was able to steady the ship of state. What was his greatest contribution? Was it democracy, liberalism, or his efforts to strengthen the pluralistic nature of a society? It would be a combination of, of several things. Uh, liberal, liberal parliamentary democracy. Okay. I think all three. There the was liberalism, there was a parliamentary system, and there was democracy. Because there, there are other types of democracy also. And I think that in all these three, he played a very prominent role. Uh, there is not to denigrate the role of Sadar Patel, for example, or, or Dr. Ambedkar, or Maulana Azad, and other leaders. But he was clearly primus inter pares. And uh, he, he left his, uh, his mark on almost every aspect of our public life. That would also include a scientific approach. Yes, a so called scientific you know, temper. Yeah. He set up yeah. these, uh, uh, these IITs, mm -hmm. which today have made such a mark around the world. They were all set up by him. The national laboratories were set up by him. The, the space uh, station was set up by him. And uh, as a result of which now we have a uh, satellites circumambulating Mars, all of these were set up during Jawaharlal Nehru's time. Mm -hmm. He called you Yuvaraj also? No, no, no. Okay. Oh, tiger. Only Tiger. Only Tiger. My father called me Tiger that generation. Okay, okay. And so he was introduced as Tiger, me and Tiger. Mm -hmm. And in my autobiography I have recorded, the first time I met him, I was in bed in a wheelchair actually at that time. And, uh, so it's your back problem? It was hip. Ah, hip problem. And uh, he visited Jammu, and the first time he visited, uh, I wasn't able to see him, so I complained to my father, I said, look, you know, I want to meet him do that. And then the second time he came, my father brought him into my room. When would this be? And this was in 1949, uh, probably um, November, December. Okay. And um, he said, Tiger is a great, you know, great admirer. <laughs> He said, I'm a high. That's the first time I met him. Now, after that, of course, I, I had his guidance for many, many years when I was such a Yasi and all the complications. The so, there's an 18 month period when you were laid down or yes, somewhere else. Yes, I was there 18 months. I was, there, I was sent to America for treatment. That was thanks to Sadar Patel, by the way. Okay. Because he also came and he saw me on the wheelchair. And this is a little digression, but I may as well put it on record. And uh, he said to my father, he said, what's wrong with this boy? He said, you know, he's been six months we've been treated. He said, look, send him to America immediately. Otherwise, he'll spend the rest of his life on the wheelchair. So I was sent to America, 31st December 1947. Okay. I landed in New York and went straight from the airport in an ambulance hospital. And spent the whole of 1948 in America. Okay. Ten months in hospital and all. The thanks to Sadar Patel that now after all these years I'm still up now. So anyhow, that's the besides the point. So then, that's why Jabala Nehru, uh, he his, his was such a vast uh, mm, canvas, you know. It's, it isn't as if he was only a politician politician. You know. He was interested in politics, he was interested in, 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 in science, he was interested in children and their welfare, and the ecology, he loved the mountains, you know. He was really a, a renaissance. When you were the Sadhara Riyasat, you were the governor. What was the working? What was working with Pandit Nehru? I didn't really work that well. I worked with him in the sense that obviously he was Prime Minister and I was head of one of the states. Right. So, uh, I used to correspond with him quite extensively. 
that was really my name. I used to meet him, of course, whenever I came to Delhi. That once I stayed as a house guest in the Murti. I remember when I first came, Rajiv was nine and Sanjay was seven. So I saw him growing up. But uh, um, so I, I used to meet him and he used to talk. But I, I corresponded extensively with him, and that correspondence, as I said, is published in a whole volume. And I used to read all his, he used to write these fortnightly letters to the chief ministers. Yeah, that's right. Uh, which he used to send me a copy, which was also, it was an education. I mean, just reading those letters was a sort of a liberal education. What was so special about the Nehru letters? The special thing about Nehru letters was the, was the, was the scope. Okay. You know, they weren't letters only directed towards, although we are doing his selected works now. In the Nehru family. We've already published 75 volumes. And another 15 volumes we needed to complete it. And the amount, his output was prodigious. Oh, absolutely. He wrote to everybody under the sun. You're a follower of Sri Aurobindo. Uh, you're interested in spirituality. Nehru, on the other hand, was a committed secular person. Was there ever a clash? The two no, approaches. There, well, no. There was a divergence, shall we say, rather than a clash. Uh, he was, towards the end of his life, if you read his letters, he had become a little more appreciative of the Vedanta, the Upanishads, which are my main inspiration. Well, as you know, Hinduism comes in a whole variety of, of packages and a whole variety of modes and, and, and impulses and, and, and uh, uh, manifestations. Did you ever blame him or held him responsibility, the kind of opportunity you could have no, got, no, no, that no, was the right? No, 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 on the contrary, not the reverse happened. What happened was that my father was the last real ruling prince. I was never a ruling prince. I was a, prince. I was a crown prince even back. And uh, he and Pandit Devadha Nehru was crashed because Panditji was against uh, the feudal order. And Panditji's great uh, favorite was Sheikh Abdullah, who was a deadly enemy of my father. So I found myself as a young age, as it were, uh, Torn, if you like, or you know, the two parts diverge, you know, yellow wood, you've heard that poem. And sorry, I could not travel both, and we do one travel. Absolutely. So these two parts were there. There was my father's path, which was a feudal path. He wanted me to come and live to Bombay and live there and raise horses and sort of live happily ever after. And there was this other path of my Nadir. I grew up with this great sense of what he called the exciting adventure of building a new India. So I was very clear in my mind from the beginning that if it comes to a choice, I will go with Nehru, not with my father. Right. Even if it's because that suited me. I'm not a frugal person by, by, by attitude. I don't like the idea of sitting around racing horses for the rest of my life. But Nehru was a committed democrat. Why should the Congress then encourage dynasty politics? The you see, the see. question is that uh, it is, is interesting. Uh, because of the Maharlal Nehru, in fact, this became, as it were, the first family. And then, in, in, interestingly, he was not succeeded by Indira. A lot of people forget right. that, that, in fact, he chose Lal Bahadur Shastri. Perhaps. If Lal Bahadur had survived and gone on for a usual term, the whole situation would have been different. But Lal Bahadur passed away suddenly, after a year and a half. There was a vacuum. And Indira Gandhi, because Jawaharlal Nehru was so revered and he was such an uh, overwhelming figure for the previous 17 years that Indira Gandhi as it were moved into the vacuum. Now Indira Gandhi moved into the vacuum and then the rest is history as you know she came in. Then she chose her son to be there. That I think was the real beginning of what you might call. That's a turning point. That is in a way the beginning of an institutionalization of the of the family. Okay. Because she could have, I mean, you know, I was much more qualified to be uh, her successor than him. I mean, I had a PhD, I had uh, linguistic skills and all. But no, she chose Sanjay. Sanjay she chose. Right. Right. So when she chose Sanjay, it became clear that nobody else was going to be able to inherit her rings. Why was this trend never, I mean, even in subsequent years, not reversed. To it, why should it be reversed? Because she was winning the votes. Right. Then she won. She won again. She won in 
1967, uh, she won in 1972. She lost in 77, uh -huh. badly. I was the only minister who won from North India. She won again in 1980. And in 1984, just before the next election, she was assassinated. Right. Now, then came a tremendous uh, uh, sympathy wave for Raji. Right. So then Raji almost automatically stepped into her shoes and got 400 votes, 400 seats in the parliament. So you see how these went. Then when Rajiv uh, was assassinated, remember Sonia didn't immediately come in. People went to her and said, Tegra, she said no. Yeah. For several years she was doing her uh, social work at the Rajiv Gandhi Foundation mm -hmm. and various other things. It was only when Sita Ram Kesari took over. See, Nazimha Rao's time was, he was the president. When Sita Ram Kesari took over and the party began to erode. What was the pluralistic nature of the society? Is it not coming under stress? And it's coming under stress, yes, certainly. You see, the pluralistic nature of India has been there now for thousands of years. Right. Uh, particularly after the Muslim advent. For you know, 700 years, there are all sorts of in the sects and subsects, and there, there are so many. All the world's great religions are here, and in the interfaith movement. Is right. So we have the four Indic religions Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, Sikhism. We have the five Semitic religions. We have Judaism, Christianity, Islam, the Baha'i faith. So, you know, and Zoroastrianism. Mm. So, we've had all these nine major world religions are here. And that will continue. Of course, the emphasis may change. And there may be some, there's, there's certainly now more emphasis on the, on the Hindu fact. Because that's the question you, you were referring to, Rig Veda, and I know you also believe in that that I do it my way, but I am aware that there are other ways of doing things, yes. which was the essential teaching. That now we are coming back to a single dominant narrative. Is that a very I healthy sign? No, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, really. I think, the, you know, there was a lot of election, electoral rhetoric, uh, which points in that direction. But uh, I think that our democracy is well enough entrenched, really, to prevent any sort of unilateralism as it were. The checks and balances are there? I think so. I okay. think so. Okay. And I hope so. <laughs> so one last can Nehru survive Modi? Yes, when Modi started wearing a Nehru jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw you saw that cover story, was it on Outlook or Time Outlook. Nehru is in a yes. Nehru jacket in a row. Ah you're in the with the New York Times that we yes. have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so uh, well, I think Nehru, Nehru will survive always. Nehru, is in a way, is, you know, Gandhi was the father of the nation, Indian nation. But I think it would be correct to say, although people may not now accept that, Nehru was the father of the Indian state. The uh, whole country was a patchwork quilt of 500 Indian states in British India. Uh, the army was partitioned, the whole thing was partitioned. At that time, these two titanic figures, Jawaharlal Nehru and Patel, Siddhar Patel between them, stabilized this ship of state. Patel was able to integrate the country, Nehru was able to get the uh, constitu uh, constitution and all uh, through. So, but, but Patel lived only till 1950 and passed away. Whereas he, Nehru gave another continuity for another 14, 15 years after. So I think that his legacy will always remain. This is an interesting issue that you're talking about because a lot of people now, especially as they become fashionable, to bring out the difference as if they were always at law no, They have different approaches, yeah. let's face it. You see, Sadar was the senior person, he was a senior man. And it is perhaps true that uh, somewhere I read that I think what, 9 out of 13 you know, PCC presidents supported him as Prime Minister. Right. But the decision was done. Right. See, he was the he was the Mahatma. He was the one who had the deeper vision. I think he realized that with all his greatness, Sadar Patel had never been out of India. He did international Nehru was known around the world, he was charismatic, he had you know, he knew New England, he knew this thing. And that he was the man who could lead India after England. So he was the one who chose. You can't blame Nehru for that. The, the decision was the Mahatma's. Twice he chose Nehru. Once he chose Nehru over Bose during the yes, yes. and the second time he chose Nehru over Patel. And Nehru, I think, lived up to the choice, justified the choice.